Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to be creating Minesweeper. And this is a game I actually played a lot back in the day when I was a kid and I didn't have internet. I would play Minesweeper. You know, it was the only option other than paint. But yeah, in this video, we're going to be making Minesweeper. So here we have our board and you can see when I click on a tile, we have three outcomes. One, we land on a mine and we get game over as you can see and if we don't land on a mine for example this one you get a number and this basically means that within one unit away so over here one two three four five six seven eight so within uh, within those eight tiles there are two bombs so these numbers are hints telling us you know how many bombs are nearby and this one has three bombs nearby so you have to use these hints to play this game. And if you click on a tile where there are no bombs nearby, it would expand outwards and check uh, the bombs for the adjacent tiles. So it would check here and then here, here, and so on until you have tiles with hints. So we're going to be using a recursion for that. And it's more of an upper beginner topic. So. If you haven't learned recursion, I'll try my best to explain the concept, but it's better if you know how recursion works. So yeah, and you can also uh, place flags. So this is a toggle and you can toggle off. And yeah, and we also have the number of mines. All right, so before we begin, I would like to mention that I am working on a web project tutorial series where I create games or other fun projects uh, for you to learn how to make. So I upload weekly. And if that is something you're interested in, uh, please consider subscribing and check out the other videos I have on my channel. I have video tutorials on Candy Crush, Wordle, 2048, Connect4, Sudoku, and now I'm making a Minesweeper. So there's going to be more games and more projects on this channel. All right, so let's begin. Uh, start by creating three files, index.html, minesweeper.css, and minesweeper.js. So I'm going to do doctype HTML, HTML. In our head tag, we're just going to do the standard stuff, car set UTF-8, meta name equals viewport, content is equal to width equals device width, initial scale is 1.0. Let's also give a title to our web page. So we're going to call it Minesweeper. And then let's link our style sheet. Style sheet. href is going to be minesweeper.css. And let's link our JavaScript. And that's it. All right, now for our body, I'm going to create a header tag, mines, and within here, I'm going to add a span of ID, mines count, and by default, I'll set it to zero. So when we load our JavaScript, I'm going to change this value to whatever value I put for the number of mines. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use five mines, but you can change it whenever you want. So now we have our board. So I'm going to create a div and give it an ID of board. We're going to use JavaScript to populate the tiles within our board. And then I'm going to add a break line and then a button and give it an ID of flag button. So I'm going to put the flag emoji in here. And I'm going to put the flag emoji for the flag and this bomb emoji for the mines, I'm going to copy and paste this into the video description so that you can use the same emojis. So this button is going to be toggle on and off. So here you can see I can toggle on and off. And when I click on the button, instead of opening up that tile, it just marks it with a flag. Okay. And usually people just use the flags to mark where the mines are like this. All right, so now if I open up the folder and I click on index.html, this is what we have so far. 
Now we need to use CSS to style it so that we can see the board and make the button bigger. So in the CSS, I'm going to start with the body and I'm going to change the font to Arial. And I'm going to make the font weight bold. And I'm going to do text align center. And then now let's style our board. So for the board, since it has an ID of board, I'm going to specify that with a hash and I'm going to give it a width of 400 pixels and a height of 400 pixels and a border 10 pixels thick, solid and dark gray. And I'm going to set the background color to light gray. All right, so now if I refresh, you can see we have our font in the middle. The button is in the middle and we have our board here. 400 pixels by 400 pixels with a border. Now we need to center this board. So to center it, we're going to do margin zero auto. And I'm also going to add display flex, flex wrap, wrap. So within our board, we're going to have tiles and we want the tiles to display from left to right every row down. But if we didn't have this, it's going to display all in a single column. So for our board, we're going to have div tags inside and this will represent each tile. So we're going to make each one 50 pixels, oops, width of 50 pixels and height of 50 pixels. So it's going to be an eight by eight board. So if the width and height are 400 each, 400 divided by eight is 50. So that's why you have each tile as 50 by 50. And I'm going to give each tile a border of one pixel solid white smoke. Now the thing is with the border, it is one pixel and the border means that there is a border left, right, up and down. So in total, we are adding two pixels extra for each tile. Now the max width is 400 pixels and the height is 400 pixels. So we want to stay within that dimension. So to compensate, I'm going to take two pixels away from the width to accommodate for border left and right and two pixels from the height for up and down. And now let's also style the text. So I'm going to make the font size 30 pixels and I'm going to do display flex and justify content center and align items center. So these two lines over here they're going to center the text within the tile. One of them centers it horizontally and the other centers it vertically so that we get the text right in the middle of the tile. So if I go to the index.html and I open up this board, I'm going to create a div tag and just put in one. And if I refresh, you can see we have our tile here. That is one. Okay. So you can see it is centered. Now we're going to use JavaScript to populate all these tiles so that we don't have to copy and paste this uh, eight times eight, so 64 times. So I'm going to get rid of this and we're going to do the work in JavaScript. Now I'm also going to add a class called tile click and I'm going to set the background color to dark gray because uh, when you don't click the tile, it hasn't been revealed. It's going to be a light gray color. So I want to make it dark gray to signify that this tile has been clicked on already. And then let's also add additional classes for the font color of the numbers. So I'm going to do X one. This just means that if the text is one, we're going to choose this class and set the color to blue. So actually, let me bring this back. And here, if I add the class, of x1 and refresh you can see that the tile has the blue font and i can also add another class just by separating with a space so i'm going to do tile clicked and if i refresh you can see that it changes the background to a dark gray color so there are going to be eight numbers because at most you can have eight minds surrounding this single tile. So there's a different color for each number. So for two, it's green. 
For 3, the color is red. For 4, the color is navy. For 5, the color is brown. For 6, the color is teal. 7, the color is black. And for 8, the color is gray. All right, so now we have one more thing to style, and that is the flag button. So I'm going to give it a width of 100 pixels, a height of 50 pixels. I'm going to make the font size 20 pixels. And the background color is going to be light gray. Oops, spelled that wrong. Light gray. So this button is going to be light gray to begin with. And when I click on it, it toggles it to dark gray. And if I click on it again, it toggles back to light gray. So we're going to use the color as an indicator to see whether the flag button is on or not. And I'm also going to take away that border for the button. So I'm going to do border none. All right, so now if I refresh, you can see we have our button here. Uh, I think the flag might be a little too small, so I'm going to change it. So let's do 30 pixels instead. All right, so now if I refresh, you can see the button is a little bigger. Well, the flag icon on the button. All right, so now that we're done with the CSS, I'm going to use JavaScript to populate the tiles within the board. All right, so before we begin typing out the code, I just want to show you what the setup is going to be like. So we're going to use two for loops, and you can see we have an 8x8 board. So we're going to, uh, within our JavaScript, we're going to create a 2D array that is going to be 8x8, like this, and so on. And each coordinate, for instance, board of RC, is going to correspond to the tag. So it's going to be a div tag for the tile. And for the tiles, uh, for each div tag, I'm going to set an ID. So the ID is going to correspond to R-C, where R is the row number and C is the column number. So here, this is 1-1, one, 1-1. One, one one, and this bomb over here is 2-3. And this one over here is 5-3. And the reason why I'm setting an ID of the row and column is because when I click on a tile, I want to know where it is on the board of divs so that I can figure out what to do with it. So in this case, if I click on a tile here, I can get the position within the board and figure out if there is a bomb nearby in this eight tile region. All right, so for our JavaScript, I'm going to create a board, which is an array, and it's going to be a 2D array. And I'm going to have rows, eight, columns, eight. And I'm going to have mines count. We're going to just set it to five for now. And we're going to keep an array of the mines location. So remember earlier, I said we are going to give each tile an ID corresponding to its coordinates, this mines location is going to be those IDs. So for instance, they could be in 2, 2, 3, 4. These would be the IDs where the bombs are or where the mines are. Well, technically, uh, mines are bombs, I guess. But yeah, where the mines are. And I'm also going to keep track of the tiles clicked. So for now, it's going to be zero. But every time we click on a tile, this goes up by one. And the goal of the game is to click all tiles except the ones containing mines. OK. And I'm also going to have a flag enabled. So we're going to set this to false. Whenever we click on the flag button, it's going to alternate between true and false for this. And we're going to have a game over variable. And I'm going to set this to false. So when the game is over, we're going to prevent the player from clicking on any other tile. So this could be when they click on a mine, that's game over, right? 
So when the page loads, I'm going to do window.onload equals function, and I'm going to create a start game function. And within this start game function, I'm going to populate all the tiles within the board div. So first, I'm going to do document.getElementById minds count and set the text to minds count. So currently it's zero, but now that I set it to five here, it's going to update that. So if I refresh, you can see the minds is now five. All right, so now let's populate our board. So I'm going to do for let r equals zero, r less than rows, r plus plus. I'm going to create a row here. And for let c equals zero, c less than columns, c plus plus. I'm going to create a tile, which is document dot create element div. So here we basically just created a div tag like this. Now I'm going to set the ID to the row and column coordinates. So r dot two string plus the dash plus c dot two string. So now I basically set the ID to zero zero and then zero one zero two and so on. Then I'm going to do document dot get element by d board, and I'm going to append this tile this div tag. And then I'm going to push this tile into my array. So here, and then I'm going to push that row into the board. And then afterwards, let's print out the board. All right, so if I refresh, you can see I have the tiles within our board. And you can see each tile has a border of one pixel. If I right click and I go to inspect, and I go to console, you can see we have our array here. This is our board array, which is a 2D array. And you can see there's div tags within this array. And each one has an ID with its row column coordinate. So now that we have our tiles, we need to make them clickable. So here I am going to do tile.addEventListener. It's going to listen for a click and it's going to call a click tile function. So down here, I'm going to define a click tile function and I'm going to set tile to this. So this refers to the tile that was clicked and let's start with the flag. So I'm going to do if flag enabled, I'm going to do if tile dot inner text is equal to empty, meaning it hasn't been clicked yet, I'm going to set it to the flag. Else, if tile.innerText is the flag, then I'm going to remove the flag. So I'm going to do tile.innerText, we'll set it to empty string. Now currently the flag enabled is always going to be false, I need to add a click event handler for the button. So I'm going to create a function called set flag. And I'm going to do if flag enabled, I'm going to turn it off. So flag enabled equals false. And then let's also update the button color to reflect this false value. So we're going to do document.getElement by D flag button. And I'm going to do style dot background color. I'm going to set it to light gray. Else, I'm going to set the flag enable to true. And here, I'm going to set the style background color to dark gray. All right, so after creating this function, I need to add it to the button. So I'm going to do document dot get element by D flag button. I'm going to add it an event listener. It's going to listen for a click and call set flag. Okay. 
So now if I refresh this and I click on the button, you can see it toggles back and forth when I click on it. And if I click on the button to toggle it on, I can set the flags. And then if I click on a tile that has a flag, it will remove the flag. Okay. So here you can see on and off. If it's off, no flags appear. Okay. So the flag is working. Next, we need to set the mines within our board. So over here, I'm going to call a set mines function and I'm going to define it up here. So let's do function set mines. And basically in here, we're going to add some coordinates like this, which represent the tile IDs. And I'm going to add it in this array called mines location. So over here, I'm going to add the mines in specific locations so we know where they are. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to randomly generate the locations for the mines. So here I'm going to do 2, 2, mines location dot push to 3, mines location dot push 5, 6, and then we're going to add 3, 4, and one more. This is going to be 1, 1. Okay, so now we have five mine locations. So now when we click on a tile, we can now check to see if that tile has a mine because we can just check to see if the ID of the tile is in this array over here. So over here, I'm going to add a return so that we don't accidentally put a flag on a mine and then trigger it. So I'm going to return after I set the flag. And then over here, I'm going to do if mines location dot includes tile dot ID. So if the tile I clicked is one of these over here, then we're going to do alert game over and I'm going to set game over to true and then I'm going to return. So if I refresh this, we said 2-2 two, two was one of them. So this should be this one here. It says game over. And this one is also a mine. This one has no mine. This one has none. This one has one. So you can see the mines are there. We just need to reveal them whenever the user clicks on them. So I'm going to create a reveal mines function that will go through the entire board and show where the mines are. So let's create a function, reveal mines. And it's just going to be a double for loop within the board. For let C equals zero, C less than columns, C plus plus. I'm going to get the tile at the board of RC and if mines location dot includes tile dot ID, I'm going to set the inner text of the tile to the bomb emoji. And I'm going to set the background color. So tile dot style dot background color. We're going to set it to red. All right. So now if I refresh, and I click on a tile. This one doesn't have a mine. Uh, this one does. So it's going to review the other mines within the board. So now we have that case down. So when we click on a tile, there are three outcomes. One, you hit the mine. Two, you hit the number. So the number represents how many mines are next to that tile. So let's go and implement that. So within our click tile function, you can see we have the case for flags and we have the case for the mine. And I'm just going to comment this one out, the alert. But let's see. Next one we need to check for is if we didn't hit a mine, we want to see how many mines are nearby. So I'm going to make use of that ID and we're going to do 
chords equal to tile.id.split by that dash. So if the ID were 0, 0, it's going to split by the dash and return an array with two numbers, two digits, which are strings of row and column. So I'm going to do let r equals parse int of chords 0 and let c equal to parse int of chords 1. And then here, I'm going to call a check mine function, and I'll pass in R and C. So over here, I'm going to create the check mine function, and it's going to take in R and C, which represent row and column. So first, I'm going to check to make sure that the row and column, R and C, are within the boundaries of the board. So if r is less than 0, or r is greater than or equal to rows, or c is less than 0, or c is greater than or equal to columns, we're going to return. So there are no mines if it's out of bounds. Now here I'm going to create a variable, mines found, and set it to 0. So we're going to check the top three. So if I click this tile, I want to check the top three over here. So to get the coordinates of the top three, this would be r minus one, this would be c minus one, and this is c plus one. So I'm going to do mines found plus equal a function called check tile. And I'm going to do r minus one and c minus one. So this is the top left. And down here, I'm going to create a check tile function. And we're going to use this check tile function a lot because we need to check for out of bounds. So it's just this over here. And this is going to be called for the recursion as well. So this is why we need to check for out of bounds. So in this case, if it's out of bounds, I'm going to return zero. Otherwise, I'm going to do if mines location dot includes r dot to string plus the dash plus c dot to string, then I'm going to return one. Otherwise, I return zero. So within check mine, I'm going to do copy and paste and here is going to be top and this one's going to be top right so for directly above it's just C and for directly to the right it's C plus one okay so now we need to check left and right so mine's found plus equal check tile so left is going to be in the same row so I'm going to keep it as R and left is C minus one. So this is left. And I'm also going to do the same for right. So same row, but C plus one. And then now we need to check the bottom three. So again, if I click on this and I want to check the bottom three, it's going to be R plus one this is C minus one and this is C plus one. So I'm just going to copy this, paste this here and make this plus one. And then we're going to change this to bottom. So now here I'm going to check if mines found is greater than zero this means we have at least one mine. I'm going to set the number. So board RC dot inner text is going to be mines found. And let's also update the style. So remember here we changed the color based on how many mines were found. So I'm going to do board RC dot class list dot add 
x plus mines found dot to string. Okay, so if two mines were found, it's going to be x2, three would be x3, and it will correspond to the class name. All right, so if I refresh and I click on this tile, you can see there's no mines. And if I click on this one, there is one mine nearby. This one is one. This one has two nearby. This one has three nearby. And if I click on this, there's two nearby. How about this? Okay, so that's the mine. So you can see this one nearby, which is this one. This one has two nearby, which is these two. This one has one, which is this. Two over here. Three, which is top left, top and right. And yeah, so that's looking good. We have the numbers. Now we need to check for the final case, where if I click on a tile, there are no mines nearby. So what do we do in that case? We need to check neighboring tiles to see if they have mines nearby. All right, so when we click on an empty tile, for example, this one, it's going to make a check around here. And because it didn't find any mines, it's going to ask its neighbors to do the same steps. So now this one is going to check this area and it finds nothing. So this one is also going to ask its neighbors to do the check. And then this one is going to do the check here. And because it found nothing here, it's going to ask this neighbor and so on. So we're going to use recursion to expand this outwards. So after this one finishes checking, it's going to go on to this one and this one checks and then this one checks and so on. And it eventually it, it expands to where each tile is going to have a mine count like this. Okay, so it's going to up, open up this region using recursion. All right, so back in our JavaScript code, I'm going to add an else here. So if mines found is not greater than zero, that means uh, there are no mines. So we need to ask the neighbors to make their check. So I'm going to do check mine and we're going to do top left. So here I'm going to do the top three. So top left is going to be R minus one, C minus one. And we're going to check top. And we're going to check top right. And then here we're going to check left and right. So check mine of R C minus one. And here we're going to check the right. So C plus one. And here we're going to check the bottom three. So I'll, again, I'm going to copy and paste this. And then we're going to do R plus one. And over here, I'm going to change it to bottom. This is bottom. And this is bottom. All right, so now if I refresh this and I click on this, you can see these get opened up, but apparently I am missing a base case somewhere. So we probably have an infinite recursion. Yes, we do. So let's see. So the problem is we need to check to see when the when we do the recursion, we want to make sure that we don't click on a tile that has already been reviewed. So as you can see here, when I check these tiles and I ask this neighbor to check these tiles, we are checking this one twice. So we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to apply a style class called tile clicked, which makes it gray. So remember, uh, over here, we set the background to dark gray if the tile was already clicked. So over here, I'm going to do within check mine, I'm going to say if board of RC, 
dot class list dot contains tile clicked oops tile clicked I'm going to return so we're not going to do any of this stuff and this also means that if we return we're not going to make any additional recursive calls so underneath I'm going to do board of RC dot class list dot add tile clicked all right so if I refresh and I click on this tile you can see it expands outwards this one so this tile has a number so it doesn't do any recursion same for this and this what about this one okay see it did the recursion and this one so now we know there are five tiles left so these are the mines so when we click on every single tile except the tiles containing mines we are going to update this message to say mines cleared so over here I'm going to do tiles clicked plus equal one so this is a variable we defined earlier and the goal is to click all the tiles except the ones containing mines so after we check for mines I'm going to do if tiles clicked is equal to rows times columns minus the mines count that means we clicked on every single tile except the ones containing mines so here I'm going to do document got dot get element by D mines count which is the span and I'm going to set the text to clear and I'm going to set game over to true okay so if I refresh and I open these and this one you can see mines cleared now there's one issue and that is even though we cleared all the mines I was still able to click on this so we need to make a check okay so within here I'm going to check if game over or this oops that looks weird or this dot class list dot contains tile clicked I'm going to return so it's not going to process any of this stuff and therefore it's not going to do check mine and it's not going to do the recursion okay so it's going to check game over when you clear all the tiles or when you hit the mine you can't click anywhere else and it will also account for whether that tile has been clicked already so this means that if I click on a tile and it revealed the number there's no point in clicking it again so we're going to save the time and avoid doing the recursion all right so if I refresh this and I click on this and this you can see mine's cleared and I can't click on these anymore now if I refresh and I click on a mine I can't click on anything else okay so game over all right, so finally, as promised, I'm going to show you how to randomly generate the mines. So I'm going to comment this out. And we're going to use a while loop. So let mines left equal to mines count. And while mines left is greater than zero, we're going to get two random row and column numbers. So math.floor math.random times rows and math.floor math.random times columns so let id is equal to r.toString plus dash plus c.toString here we're going to make a check if not mine's location dot includes id we're going to add that ID that we just generated. So mines location dot push ID and mines left minus equal one. So we're going to use a while loop because there's a chance that we generate the same ID and if we use the regular counter, 
let's say from 0 to 5, there's a chance that we could get 1-1 one, one twice, and now we only have 4 bombs, or 4 mines. So that's why we have a while loop. So now if I refresh this and I click on this, you can see the mines are in a different location. Uh, I'm actually not very good at the game, um, but... Uh, is it, oh shit, okay. Yeah, I'm not good at the game, but uh, yeah, so you can see the mines are in different locations. And if you want, you can change the number of mines. So I can even put 45 here, which is uh, quite dangerous, actually. So if I refresh, oh, I already hit a mine. All right, so you can see we have a fully functional game of Minesweeper. And if you found this tutorial helpful, uh, please give it a like. Let me know down below in the comments and consider subscribing. So a challenge for you is if you want to continue working on this project, I want you to take a user input and have the user tell you how many mines they want in the field. So that might require a little bit more research and I'm not doing too well in this game actually, but that might require some research on how to add an input and uh, you, you would also need to create a button for start game. So yeah, um, I'm going to leave that up to you and come on. Oh, seven. There you go. You can see it's a different color. Uh, let's see how lucky I am. Okay. Anyway, yeah, um, that's it for this tutorial and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.